Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another Faction Preview video for the Fates Divided DLC. And this time we'll be taking a look at the 200 star for Liu Zhang's faction. So this is Liu Yan's son, and historically Liu Yan's already dead. So if you're playing on the 200 start, the inheritance already happened. And if you check here under characters, you can see that the inheritance you got was the delayed inheritance, which is the historically accurate one since you got the inheritance in the middle of 194 when your father died instead of at the beginning of 194 for the early inheritance bonus. It's still not bad, you get 5% melee evasion and 10% campaign movement range for your own army. And by own army we mean Liu Zhang's army himself. And he has incompetent, careless, and clever. So you might be wondering how he can be incompetent and clever at the same time and I have to say that I am also a bit confused as well as the combination of traits. Um, historically he was not incompetent, I wouldn't say that. Um, I feel like he is casted as an incompetent character uh, in the romance version because Liu Bei would take over his faction. So even if Liu Bei is writing the history, he would have to write bad things about Liu Zhang to make him taking over make sense. Um, you have very interesting bonuses actually. You have minus 20% character salary on your background, minus 25% redeployment costs, and plus 10 faction support. At least this is what the front end says. It might still be his old traits in terms of the background traits once we load up into the game since I am on the pre-release version of the game. So I believe after launch it should match the front end bonus. So these bonuses are actually quite nice and will help you save quite a bit of money. And since the inheritance already happened, we don't have to worry about trade off as those are gone. Now there was a mistake when I did the deep dive because I was under the assumption that aspiration is preset by your you know, father. But fortunately, aspiration can still be gained uh, after inheritance, although it's not through trade-off or task. And the tasks are final. If you didn't unlock one of the you know, bonuses for inheritance, you can't use it. Uh, but aspiration you can still gain two ways. By conquest, uh, after you take land, you basically can have the option to gain some aspiration depending on which type of occupy you do. And you can also gain passive aspiration per turn through high level cities starting at small regional city. Or actually starting at a large city I believe. Level 6 you get 2 aspiration point per turn. And the taller you build, the more aspiration you have. So technically it encourages Liu Zhang's faction to build tall which is quite interesting. And you obviously will use those aspiration for the inheritance bonus. Our faction unique unit is the Dong Zhou Bin uh, Defender and the Marksman. Uh, these are decent unit, I don't think they're game breaking. Uh, this one's kind of interesting with the spear, shield, and bow combo, which is always a nice one. And our faction unique feature is the inheritance. We start out with Fa Zheng. Uh, he is not going to betray us if we are going to play as him. We'll make the right decisions. Uh, starting situation is easy. I think this is largely because we start out isolated in the west and the Shu region with the new terrain change from the last uh, the Furious Wild expansion pack is actually quite secure with a number of rivers and mountain passes and we do start out with most of it under our control already. We do have one enemy to the north and this will be Zhang Lu. Now Zhang Lu was historically a vassal to our father but after we took over he and uh, us did not get along so we actually went to war. Now the common misconception is the thinking that Liu Yan died and Zhang Lu didn't respect Liu Zhang because he's incompetent, therefore he rebelled. Whereas in history, Zhang Lu was never really a full-pledged vassal to Liu Yan in the first place. When Liu Yan was first entering the Shu region, he settled and the Hanzhong region wasn't you know, under his control, so he sent Zhang Lu along with uh, someone else to go uh, take the region and once they took it Zhang Lu killed his partner and seized all the men and set up camp in Hanzhong which is a vital passage into the Shu region. It's one of the valleys through the mountain that's very easy to traverse through the Han River and he took out the government checkpoints and isolated Shu. This is him doing this on his own. I don't think he was listening to Liu Yan's 
um, you know, request doing this. And then Liu Yan basically reported this to the imperial government and said, look, I'm isolated now. And he liked that because we all know that Liu Yan wanted to become emperor. So he wanted to be isolated. And it's convenient that, you know, his subordinate Zhang Lu did that in Hanzhong. So he allowed Zhang Lu to exist in Hanzhong because it fitted his need. Think of it as a buffer state that he can use as excuse to the government says, well, I want to pay tribute. I want to behave. I want to listen to your you know, decrees, but the message is not coming in because Zhang Wu sitting here with his, you know, Taoist sect running the entire Hanzhong region like a Taoist religion, uh, which he was doing. And once Liu Yan took over, I think Liu Yan didn't want to put up with that. And Liu Yan actually had Zhang Wu's mother killed. Uh, she lived back in uh, Chengdu. And once that happened, you know, the two factions go into war. So that's where we find ourselves as we'll hop into game right now and check out our roster and our starting position. 主公自令尊过时候承袭其领地皆欲置对方于死地请务必部下哨岗监视其动向。父辈基业如重担在肩，唯求保其周全。如此，方显主公不负此传承。Alrighty, so we have our flyby. We know our starting situation. Um, it seems like the game wants us to expand north while taking care of our southern front. A bright beginnings, Lord Liu Zhang. It has been a few years since your father's passing, and during that time, China has only sunken deeper into turmoil and chaos. Amidst the storm, you have slowly consolidated your power to become ever stronger. The time is now to set sight on your father's ambition and achieve what even the great Liu Yan could not, to become the emperor of all China. Use the aspiration gathered by your predecessors to purchase the powerful bonuses your father unlocked for you. Generate farther aspiration by having high level cities and by conquering settlements. So, uh, we have a mission to beat Yang Ren's army or engage his army. A very standard early mission with a taste of victory bonus. And that's it. That's our starting situation here. Pretty straightforward. We do have a bunch of the land already under our control. Uh, most of Basi uh, missing the tool maker, which is pretty essential. You probably want to hold this tool maker because this is the mountain path that comes in, unless you have Jiamengguan, um, or if you want to take the long, you know, track through the mountains to do uh, copper mine. But that's about it. If we hold this, uh, very easy access to the weaponsmith here, which I think is an early target. Uh, we want good relationship with Liu Bao's faction. Uh, ideally, we probably want to take Ba Dong over as well. Uh, in the south, we see that Shamoke Mulu borders us. We have control of Jiangyang, which is good actually. And then Menghuo over here. So we do border all three of the Naman factions that are left. I believe most of the Naman factions have consolidated at this point, and they're the only three left. Therefore, we probably end up facing a lot less enemies than the early stages when I assume Jiangyang's region will be shared between some of the minor, uh, you know, tribes of the southern tribe, Nanman tribes. Uh, Wutugu is probably gone, probably confederated by one of these. Um, I don't know which one, but we probably don't have to worry about them very much. We have two armies, one on the southern front led by Ma Yue and Zhu Gui, who I have no idea who both of them are. Given, by, given their age, I'm assuming they are early period officials in this region. 
um, because the ones that I'm going to be more familiar with are going to be the ones that you know participate in the later parts of the history in this region when Liu Bei enters. And there's plenty of them on the roster, like namely Fa Zheng here being one of the more famous ones. Fa Zheng is relatively young during this time. He was a refugee that escaped into the Shu region uh, due to famine out uh, in the you know central plains. And he became quite the advisor uh, to Liu Zhang first and even more famous after uh, he joined Liu Bei. So he was a proponent for heralding Liu Bei into Shu and also for betraying Liu Zhang because their intention was to take over Shu from the very beginning. The other person that had this idea and who actually was the one to push for this is Zhang Song. So if you're looking for traitors, you can start with him. Now Zhang Song, I really actually like this artwork for him even though generic, is known historically to be very ugly looking. Um, he was very short. Um, I think often he was described as a melon that grew incorrectly, uh, to put it nicely. And despite his appearance, the second line of his description is that even though his looks uh, do not look, uh, I guess, decent, his talent is extraordinary. So he was a very talented person, but because of his look, he was often overlooked. Uh, no puns there. And he was sent out as an envoy to Cao Cao uh, later on, not in 200. But once Cao Cao you know, conquered Yuan Shao and started to attack Zhang Lu in the region and Liu Biao's you know, death and surrender of his son, he became our neighbor, right? Liu Bei, uh, Cao Cao would take over this region. Liu Bei wouldn't, wouldn't be here yet. Uh, Battle of Chibi would not start yet. So it looks like Cao Cao is going to take over all of China outside of the Shu region. So Liu Zhang started to worry about the situation. So he sent Zhang Song out as an envoy to the capital, pay some tributes, and get some news. Well, Zhang Song went to the capital. Some people there recognized his talent, namely Yang Xiu, and Yang Xiu wanted to recommend uh, Zhang Song to meet with Cao Cao. Uh, but Cao Cao caught a glimpse of him and saw how he looked like and refused to meet him. So he got turned the cold shoulder in the capital so he had a grudge against Cao Cao because of that. And once he went back into the Shu region, he started telling Liu Zhang that being allies with Cao Cao is not possible and that we need to ally ourselves with Liu Bei. And it would be a good idea if we let Liu Bei come in and use him as an ally to fight Zhang Lu, who had absorbed Ma Chao at the time. So that's what happened. And uh, they fought around Jiameng Guan here. So eventually we'll see that DLC where Ma Chao is definitely an independent faction. Um, but at this point, uh, Zhang Song made that plan and it went really well in the beginning. You know, Liu Zhang invited Liu Bei in. They feasted in Chengdu for many days. Liu Zhang gave him supplies. He sent the army north to fight Ma Chao. But Liu Bei wasn't actively fighting because they were planning to take over the entire Shu region. And when he wasn't going to get more supplies. Liu Bei was asking for more supplies all the time. Liu Bei pretended that he was going to leave Shu. And this upset Zhang Song because it was his plan to have Liu Bei come in, but he didn't know Liu Bei was pretending to leave. But he writes a letter to Liu Bei asking him, what about the things we talked about? And his brother, uh, Zhang Su, actually saw the letter and told on, his, told on Zhang Song, gave the letter to Liu Zhang, and Liu Zhang had Zhang Song executed. So Zhang Song never got to see the day that Liu Bei took over, but his friend Fa Zheng did, as Fa Zheng flipped and joined Liu Bei at that time, and under their guidance, they took over all of Shu eventually. It was a three-year war, so it wasn't an instant surrender. It took a long time. And when Liu Bei was crowned emperor uh, around, uh, you know, after 220, or, um, or at least the prince of um, Chengdu, like, um, Shu, right? He was basically in the region, he took control, he gave out rewards to his key generals. And there were four generals who received the most reward. I believe it was 500 ounce of gold plus double that of silver plus other things. But the four people who received it was Fa Zheng, Zhuge Liang, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei. 
So from that, you can see how important Fa Zheng was at the time as advisor to Liu Bei. But unfortunately, Fa Zheng would die pretty soon after. I believe Fa Zheng died at 45, though, so that would put him around 221. That's actually right, right, because he would get that reward when Liu Bei declares himself emperor, and that would be 220, and then the year after, he dies. So 221, he dies. That makes sense. So Fa Zheng was also the one who came up with the strategy at um, the Battle of Hanzhong, um, you know, Ding Junshan, when we talk about killing of Xia Hou Yuan and such. Uh, Fa Zheng was the strategist behind those plans. Very crafty guy. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have the burn trait in the game, which makes him a bit weaker. But he does have double health, and he does have a very nice active ability, Mock, which allows him to damage enemy generals. Uh, for 6k damage over 60 seconds, melee attack rate debuff, morale debuff, pretty strong uh, ability that you start out with here. So, pretty nice. Uh, you still have Wisdom of the River on top of that, so he is really good at killing Duelist. You can see fondness to Liu Zhang here, which I'm actually surprised. I was expecting to see Liu Bei as well, but this is good. Uh, so that way you can keep him as a loyalist, despite him having quite a bit of desire for higher office in the beginning. You're going to have to just find a way to appease your forces, maybe switch air. I'm assuming you're using your son, yes, Liu Xun, who is almost of age, he's 15, but because he is a sentinel, he might not be a great heir. We don't have a lot of choices. We have a fake mother. Uh, I say fake mother because she is technically not the right historical character. I have no idea why the game has Song Meng Gan as the mother. Because historically, it was Lady Fei. Uh, Fei clan was very big in the region. So I don't know where she comes from. Uh, but our wife, I believe, is Lady Liu. Um, which it doesn't matter. She's a strategist. She's not going to make a good heir. So we're going to have some trouble finding a good heir, it seems. Maybe the son after comes of age will be okay. But we're not sure. Hmm. Anyways, that's probably one of the first challenges you have to deal with finding a good heir to balance out the satisfaction issues because it doesn't look like we have a very robust roster apart from Fa Zheng, which is normal. Um, if anything, the only character that probably would end up getting a portrait out of these may be Zhang Song, but he dies quite early. Dong He might deserve... Oh, he does have a background. He deserves a good background. Honest and fair. Okay, let's take a look at our roster overall. So that's a generic one, that's a generic one. Uh, Wang Lei, he's famous because when Liu Zhang was planning to ask Liu Bei to come in, there were people in his court that were wise enough to say this is a terrible idea. Wang Lei was one of them, and he did something really dramatic. He took a rope, tied himself to the city gate, so the big front gate of the city, hung himself from the gate, like grabbing the rope by his hand, right? Not hanging him on the neck. And basically hung himself by the gate and told Liu Zhang, if you don't take it back, as in take back the envoy asking Liu Bei to come in, I'm going to use my sword, cut the rope, and fall down from here, right? Because he's basically pleading. It's a terrible idea. Don't do it. Liu Zhang didn't listen, and Wang Lei actually cut the rope and fell down from the top of the gate and died right there, so he's famous for that. Um, Dong He here has Honest and Fair. We'll take a look at him. Five points of satisfaction. It's definitely a unique one because we're getting 30 points here. It's probably makes for good error. If anything, it's like a miniature version of Lady Bian or, you know, uh, Lady um, Mi type of bonus, which is decent and being a commander, you can definitely utilize it. Now, you know he's old. Uh, but he goes on to live for quite a long time historically. So adopting him as your son might be a little weird. I understand. He also has honest. And yeah, he might really make it for a good air if you're just playing that min-max type of game. Um, because you get two food, you get minus five corruption, you get five satisfaction, you eventually will get the redeployment and everything else. And historically speaking, he was a great administrator. Both under Liu Zhang and under Liu Bei. Not only is he... A good administrator. I don't even know if honest and fair is a good description of him. So when he first became administrator here around Chengdu, I think he's originally from Badong actually. 
I think his family fled west uh, during some bandit issues. He just, they they fled west, and then he eventually became, I I believe, the administrator or the mayor of Chengdu. And his main policy was the locals in this area lived a very gluttonous life because there was a lot of good trade here. You had the silk, you had the jades, you have a lot of natural resources around this region, and you have plenty of food. It's a very big bread basket. So no one really was lacking, at least the rich families here, the big clans. And they like to live a little bit excessive, right? The main issue was marriages, funerals, uh, birth, that type of event, way too many celebrations. And Dong He's policy was live simple and he did it himself and he made rules that made people really scared to celebrate and be wasteful and he changed the culture here by being that example and also being the head here so that he can make rules on top of that and he really lived true to that and uh, when the locals didn't like him they asked Liu Zhang to promote him away from Chengdu right that's the strategy right you, you tell them He's doing a great job. Let's promote him somewhere else. So Liu Zhang promoted him to another place. But when he was about to switch jobs, thousands of citizens, like regular citizens, came out and just like grabbed him, would not let him go. So Liu Zhang had no choice to make him stay here and stay being mayor. And when Liu Bei took over, he stayed on and became administrator and was very fair, was very, you know, incorruptible, didn't you know, use his position for his own wealth. And I believe the record says when like when he died, their family had less than one done of grains. Like that's like the salary for a lot of officials is 2000 done a year. And they had saving of one unit of that. Like they were poor. Like he lived a very, very poor life, I guess, but basically very fair. Like he didn't use his position for wealth at all. And he's known as a very good, um, just government official. I think if you visit um, Liu Bei's temple in Chengdu, there is a wing of the building where they have the statues of all like top 14 administrators. He's like rank six or somewhere in the middle in there as one of the statues. So he's quite significant even down the line in Shu's history. He lives quite a bit because he's got to last till like 220s. All right, so that's Dong He. We already talked about this is wife, this is fictional mother. No idea who he is. No idea who he is. We talked about Zhang Song. Right, I don't know any of the other ones. So yeah, um, given their age, given this time period, I'm assuming they're just local officials that CA found from history books. And uh, maybe some of them didn't get to live till when Liu Bei came in and the story became more relevant for um, the Three Kingdoms period. Now, we do have two armies, right? This one's decent. We have Dong Zhou Bing. Now, I'm wondering what the capacity is. Six unit of each. So that's the inheritance we got, plus six units. So there is a unit recruitment limit on your faction unique building, which might seem a bit rough, but I think it's okay. I don't think these units are spam worthy. Like this one, maybe. Like we're looking at what? 60% range block chance on the shield. The range damage is okay. Um, 25.8. It's actually like 25.8. It's better than militia. Is it better than archers? Which we don't have the tech for. Right, we don't have the tech for the archers. But we can probably check our tech. So our reform tree. We don't have archers, so we don't actually start out with private tutor. 25 and 8. So we we are at archer damage there on that unit, but it's hybrid, so it's more flexible. I do like the reform tree though. We have all the industry and commerce thing going here. A little bit of food started here. Population growth, livestock farm. Okay. It feels like we are two reforms away from maxing out most of the industry one. We probably still need this for a private workshop. And then we can also go down this route if we build a school. This is probably the best one we have seen so far. And we can also grab one of these really early if we want. Construction time decrease. Usually, I don't come here, but if we have this, we might as well. But yeah, 
But those are all options, and we have a bunch of really good commanderies. Jianliang is fairly decent with a harbor and a copper mine, very precious. Lumber, food, uh, you can definitely go uh, either commerce and industry here, just kind of ignore the wood production here, or try to go all three and just go really tall. It's also a possibility, but this is a Nanman settlement, so going tall, it's worth less because we don't get the base peasantry. But as you can see here, once we hit level 6, there's two points of aspiration that shows up. So I guess it's encouraging us to go tall because this is a good way for us to sustain our aspiration, which starts out at a very low 600 out of a total of 10k. Now our father, who died off screen, did not unlock these three for us, so we cannot get faction-wide character experience boost. We cannot get recruitment cost discount in local county, and we cannot get instant completion. So those are losses, obviously. But on the bright side, we do have the campaign movement range and plus morale. I'm assuming this is for our own army, so this doesn't have any conditional statement like whole faction, like own faction. And we have local county replenishment, local county income from all sources, not bad. Spears at, oh, spawns at exceptional auxiliary every 10 turns. So a silver auxiliary item every 10 turns. That's not half bad and instantly level up a character every 20 turns. So the cooldown is very long, but the reward can be quite nice, especially on high level characters, right? If you want Liu Zhang to gain level, that's probably a pretty decent way. So you're 8,000 away, right? So the calculation would be, perhaps you want to wait till you hit five, because you do have this starter battle, and we're against Yang Ren, who historically worked under Zhang Lu and got killed by Cao Cao in a raid when Cao Cao was fighting Zhang Lu. I think in romance he gets killed by like Xia Yuan, like they gave the kill to him, but I think historically he just got killed in the night raid and that's pretty much it. So I think he's going to get killed on turn one here by us. Not the most historical death, but at least the character is historically in the right faction, so that's nice. Right, so I think we can get 3,000 from the duel if we set him up with the duel, because he can assist with the abilities, so I'm sure he will win. So if you initiate the duel, you get a nice experience boost, and then you try to get some kill on him. Level him to 5, use that ability, boost him to 6, make him, you know, very useful. Try to pick up both of these skills for faction-wide boost. Liu Zhang also got remade and got a new skill that goes well with proponent piece. Which should not have this bonus anymore, by the way, because remember we checked out outside in the faction select screen. They plan to change it for all the character salary, which I believe would mean that it's not being factored in right now. So we actually will have more money on launch, which is also great. But the unique ability is here, Seize Fire. So we've seen this type of ability in many of the Total War games before. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but there's a similar one in Troy that I've been using recently. Basically, it's a range effect. When you use it, 50 range from where you are, 60 seconds. All units will gain 50% defensive stat, here damage resistant, so you just double the tankiness. But everyone lose melee attack rate here, so everyone hits slower. And the whole point is ceasefire, right? You're a proponent of peace and you immobilize everyone. So no one can move. This is, I think, quite interesting. If you can line up the 50 meter circle correctly, you can technically just freeze the enemy units, including cavalry. Imagine enemy cavalry charging your front line and you use this on them. You immobilize them. You make them tankier, sure but you make them like useless basically, right? You don't hit them, just crowd them. Like send in your spearmen after 50 seconds, right? For 60 seconds, they're stuck there. And then when they can move again, your spear is right in their face and the cavalry gets killed. So I think there's, there's fun things you can do with this and this is not super weak. Worst case scenario, you stall the enemy in place, right? And your own units. But if you just plan a little bit with how you place your general, I think there's a lot of promising things you can do with this. So both he and Fa Zhong would have very fun abilities to use. Now even though we're way out west, some of the new mechanic will still apply to us. We still have to deal with Imperial Intrigue. We probably want to just try to keep it decently high for the bonuses, right? We have the diplomatic ones, we have the satisfaction ones, and the corruption reducing, uh, reducing ones. We don't want to drop below 50. We're so far away from the Emperor, I don't think we need to dream about taking him, but you just want to balance things to make sure that you stay afloat. 
Uh, we also would have a lot of food given that we are in the Shu region, so use that in diplomacy to your advantage. I assume it probably pays well to pick a side in the Nama factions. I don't know if southern expansion is the ideal move or going through all of Zhonglu's land is better. Um, maybe it's safer to just clear up Zhonglu and Ma Teng and Han Sui. Ma Teng should be in a war with Han Sui, who's bigger in this start. So if we can maybe start out by beating them, things will be a little bit easier. I don't have any... We have a mother that you can use to marry away on turn one. So I'm thinking... Oh yeah. This is definitely a viable strategy then. You can steal Macho on turn one. Very simple. Because our mother is a widow. So that's probably the ideal start here. Just to steal Macho as an extra general and fire some of the ones that you don't really want. Um, and then move on from there. You have access to spies, but nothing... I, I believe you cannot spy on turn one in this new start. Because I think I've seen this for every faction, despite where they're located and how many spies they have. We have a court, two administrators, everyone over here is open. Given the new mechanic, I would argue that maybe you want to splurge and uh, hire some people here. Also take care of the satisfaction issue, like if Fajong's too high level, maybe giving him a position would help him out by a bunch. And also help your faction with the bonuses, get the new faction council going, and uh, go from there. I don't think it's a terribly hard start, right? You're hugging the border, all your expansion targets are around the edge. Holding the Nunmine faction might be a bit challenging, but I don't know how united they will be, right? Mulu clearly is in a face-off against Monko in the beginning. Uh, I would think the player would eventually have to beat all of them, but I think you have the tools to do so. Uh, bring fire, bring cavalry, and you should be okay. So that's going to do it for us uh, with this quick preview of Liu Zhang's faction. I know many of you probably are curious about the 190 and 194 start for Liu Yan since that is also very new in this uh, new DLC. But I think for the purpose of these faction preview for the DLC content, we're going to stick to 200. If we have extra time on the last few days before the release, I'll go revisit that then. And uh, in the meantime, please enjoy these and we'll see you with the next one. Bye!